Hello YouTube, this is the Killer Cowboy, and today I'm going to put out there a little something I just found on the internet. Um, I myself live with adult ADD. It's an extremely difficult uh, condition to live with, and not a whole lot is known about it by the general public. Well, today I found on drhallowell.com, that's www.drhallowell.com, uh, 50 tips for management of adult ADHD. Now, some of these, if you don't have a lot of money or a high income, are not really going to be for you, but in general, these are pretty helpful things to know. So I'm going to put this out here. I'm going to read it. And again, I give you the website. If you want to read it yourself or read along with me or whatever, please feel free. It's www.drhallowell.com slash adult dash ADHD dash 50 dash tips dash of dash management forward slash. I'll put that in the description below as well. Um, all right, it starts out by Edward M. Hallowell, M.D., and John J. Ratey, M.D. The treatment of adult ADHD begins with hope. We break down the treatment of adult ADHD into five basic areas, diagnosis, education, structure supporting coaching, various forms of psychotherapy, and medication. The following are 50 tips for the non-medication treatment of ADHD. Insight and education. Number one, be sure the diagnosis. Make sure you're working with a professional who really understands ADHD and has excluded related or similar conditions, such as anxiety states, agitated depression, hyperthyroidism, manic depressive illness or obsessive compulsive disorder. Number two, educate yourself. Perhaps the most, the single and most powerful treatment for ADHD is under a, understanding ADHD in the first place. Read books, talk with professionals, talk with other adults who have ADHD. You'll be able to design your own treatment to fit your own version of ADHD. Number three, coaching. It is useful for you to have a coach, for some person near you to keep after you, but always with humor. Have somebody, this is my own paraphrasing by the way, have somebody keep right up on your butt, like, okay, come on, you got to get this done, let's go, let's go, let's go. Right up on you. It does help. From personal experience, it does help. Um, your coach can help you get organized, stay on task give your encouragement give you encouragement or remind you to get back to work friend colleague or therapist it is possible but risky for your coach to be your spouse a coach is someone to stay on you to get things done exhort you as coaches do keeps on keep on tasks keep tabs on you wow okay can't read today and in general be in your corner a coach can be tremendously helpful in treating ADHD encouragement and this is why the coach is so great um, ADHD adults need lots of encouragement personal experience again uh, this is in part due to their having many self doubts that have accumulated over the years but it goes beyond that more than the average person the ADHD adult withers without encouragement and positivity positively lights up like a Christmas tree when given it. They will often work for another person in a way they won't work for themselves. This isn't bad, it just is. It should be recognized and taken advantage of. Uh, number five, I don't understand, but I'm going to read it anyway. Realize what H is not, i.e. conflict with mother, etc., I don't understand what that means, but I'm going to put it out there anyway. Uh, number six, educate and involve others. Just as it's key for you to understand ADHD, it's equally, if not more important for those around you to understand it. Family, job, school, friends, 
once they get the concept, they'll be able to understand you much better and to help you as well. Uh, number seven, give up guilt over high stimulus seeking behavior. Understand that you are drawn to high stimuli. Try to choose them wisely rather than brooding over the bad ones. Uh, listen to feedback from trusted others, adults, and children too with ADHD are notoriously poor self-observers. They use a lot of what can appear to be denial. Consider joining or starting a support group. Much of the most useful information about ADHD has not yet found its way into books, but remains stored in the minds of the people who have ADHD. In groups, this information can come out. Plus, groups are really helpful in giving the kind of support that's so badly needed. Try to get rid of the negativity that may have infested your system. If you've lived for years without knowing what you had was ADHD, a good psychotherapist may help in this regard, although obviously if you don't have a lot of money or insurance, blah, 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 you're not going to be able to do that. Uh, number 11, don't feel chained to conventional careers or conventional ways of coping. Give yourself permission to be yourself. Give up trying to be the person you always thought you should be, the model student or the organized executive, for example, and let yourself be who you are. Those of us with ADHD are inherently what most people would call weird. <laughs> Own it. Live it. Be who you are. It's so much easier to live life when you just be who you are. Uh, let's see, number 12, remember that what you have is a neuropsychiatric condition. It is genetically transmitted. It is caused by biology, by how your brain is wired. It is not a disease of the will, nor a moral failing. It's not caused by a weakness in character or a failure to mature. Its cure is not found in the power of will, nor in punishment, nor sacrifice, nor in pain. Always remember this. Try as they might, many people with ADHD have great trouble accepting the syndrome as being rooted in biology rather than weakness of character. Number 13, try to help others with ADHD. You'll learn a lot about the condition in the process as well as feel good to boot. Uh, number 14, this is, this is a new section, performance management. Uh, external structure, number 14. Structure is the hallmark of the non-pharmacological treatment of the ADHD child. It can be equally useful with adults. Tedious to set up. Once in place, structure works like the walls of the Bob said slide Bob sled slide, well that's a tongue twister, keeping the speedball sled from careening off track. Make f frequent use of lists, color coding, reminders, note to self, rituals, and files. Uh, pertaining to that, number 16, color coding mentioned above. Color coding deserves emphasis. Many people with ADHD are visually oriented. I know I am. Take advantage of this by making things memorable with color. Files, memoranda, text, schedules, etc. Virtually anything in the black and white of type can be made more memorable, arresting, and therefore attention getting with color. Number 17, use pizzazz. In keeping with number 15, try to make your environment as peppy as you want it to be without letting it boil over. Uh, number 18, set up your environment to reward rather than deflate. To understand what a deflating environment is, uh, all most adult ADHDers need to do is think back to school. Now that you have the freedom of adulthood, try to set things up so that you will not constantly be reminded of your limitations. Acknowledge and anticipate the inevitable collapse of X percent of projects undertaken, relationships entered into, and obligations incurred. Embrace challenges. ADHD people, ADHD people 
thrive with many challenges. As long as you know they won't all pan out, as long as you don't get too perfectionist and fussy, you'll get a lot done and stay out of trouble. Uh, make deadlines. Break down large tasks into small ones. Attach deadlines to the small parts. Then, like magic, the large task will get done. This is one of the simplest and most powerful of all structuring devices. Often a large task will feel overwhelming to the person with ADHD. The mere thought of trying to perform the task makes one turn away, a.k.a. cleaning my house. I take one look at it and go, oh, dear God, this is going to take forever, and it never gets done. Um, on the other hand, if the large task is broken down into small parts, each component may feel quite manageable. Prioritize. Avoid procrastination. When things get busy, the adult ADHD person loses perspective. Paying an unpaid parking ticket can feel as pressing as putting out the fire that just got started in the wastebasket. Prioritize. Take a deep breath. Put things first. Procrastination is one of the hallmarks of adult ADHD. You have to really discipline yourself to watch out for it and avoid it. Accept fear of, going, of things going well. Accept edginess when things are too easy when there's no conflict. Don't gum things up just to make them more stimulating. Notice how and where you work best. In a noisy room, on the train, wrapped in three blankets, listening to music, whatever. Children and adults with ADHD can do their best under rather odd conditions. Like I said, we are inherently weird. <laughs> um, uh, let's see... Let yourself work under whatever conditions are best for you. Okay? Know that it's okay to do two things at once. Carry on a conversation and knit, or take a shower and do your best thinking, or jog and plan a business meeting. Often people with ADHD need to be doing several things at once in order to get anything done at all. Do what you're good at. Again, if it seems easy, that's okay. There's no rule that says you can only do what you're bad at. Leave time between engagements to gather your thoughts. Transitions are difficult for ADHDers, and mini breaks can help ease the transition. Keep a note notepad in your car, by your bed, and in your pocketbook or jacket. You never know when a good idea will hit you, or you'll want to remember something else. Read with a pen in hand not only for marginal notes or underlining, but for the inevitable cascade of other thoughts that will occur to you. Okay, now we're on to the section called Mood Management. Have a structured blowout time. Set it some time in every week aside for just letting go. Whatever you like to do, blasting yourself with loud music, taking a trip to the racetrack, having a feast... Pick some kind of activity from time to time where you can let loose in a safe way. Recharge your batteries. Uh, most adults with ADHD need, on a daily basis, some time to waste without feeling guilty about it. One guilt-free way to conceptualize it is to call it time to recharge your batteries. Take a nap. Watch TV. Meditate. Something calm, restful, at ease. Choose good, helpful addictions, such as exercise. Many adults with ADHD have an addictive or compulsive personality, such that they are always hooked on something. Try to make this something positive. Understand mood changes and ways to manage these. Know that your moods will change willy-nilly, independent of what's going on in the external world. Don't waste your time ferreting out the reason why or looking for someone to blame. Focus rather on learning to tolerate a bad mood, knowing that it will pass, and learning strategies to make it pass sooner. Changing sets, i.e. getting involved with some new activity, preferably interactive, such as conversations with a friend or a tennis game or reading a book will often help. Um, related to the last one, uh, recognizing 
the following cycle, which is very common among adults with ADHD. Something startles your psychological system, a change or transition, a disappointment, or even a success. The precipitant may be quite trivial. This startle is followed by a mini panic with a sudden loss of perspective, the world being set upside down. You try to deal with this panic by falling into a mode of obsessing and ruminating over one or another aspect of the situation. This can last for hours, days, even months. Uh, plan scenarios to deal with the inevitable blahs. Have a list of friends to call. Have a few videos that always engross you and get your mind off things. Have ready access to exercise. Have a punching bag or pillow handy if that's, there's the extra angry energy. Uh, rehearse a few peps talks you can give yourself. You've been here before. These are the ADHD blues. They'll soon pass. You're okay. Expect depression after success. People with ADHD commonly complain of feeling depressed, paradoxically, after a big success. This is because the high stimulus of the chase or the challenge or the preparation is over. The deed is done, win or lose, the adult with ADHD misses the conflict, the high stimulus, and feels depressed. Learn symbols, slogans, or sayings as shorthand ways of labeling and quickly putting into perspective slip-ups, mistakes, or mood swings. Uh, when you turn left instead of right and take your family on a 20-minute detour, it's better to be able to say, oh, there goes my ADHD again, than to have a six-hour fight over your unconscious desire to sabotage the whole trip. These are not excuses. You still have to take responsibility for your actions. It's just good to know where your actions are coming from and where they're not. Uh, number 39, use timeouts. As with children, when you're upset or overstimulated, take a time out. Go away. Calm down. Uh, learn how to advocate for yourself. Adults with ADHD are so used to being criticized, they're often unnecessarily defensive in putting their own case forward. Learn to get off the defensive. Avoid premature co closure of a project, a conflict, a deal, or a conversation. Don't cut to the chase too soon even though you're itching to. Uh, try to let the successful moment last and be remembered. Become sustaining over time. You'll have to consciously and deliberately train yourself to do this because you'll just as soon forget. Remember that ADHD usually includes a tendency to overfocus or hyperfocus at times. This hyper-focusing can be used, to constructive, used constructively or destructively. Be aware of its destructive use, a tendency to obsess or ruminate over some imagined problem without being able to let it go. This is the one I have the biggest problem with. Exercise vigorously and regularly. You should schedule this into your life and stick with it. Exercise is positively one of the best treatments for ADHD. It helps work off excess energy and aggression in a positive way. It allows for noise reduction into the mind. It stimulates the hormonal and neurochemical system in a most therapeutic way. And it soothes and calms the body. When you add all that to the well-known health benefits of exercise, you can see how important exercise is. Make it something fun so you can stick with it over the long haul, i.e. the rest of your life. Uh, make a good choice in a significant other. Uh, obviously this is good advice for anyone, but it's striking how the adult with ADHD can thrive or flounder depending on the choice of mate. Uh, it, it has a lot to do with the encouragement thing. Um, if you have a mate who doesn't understand the condition, it can be very frustrating to them the way that we are. Uh, I got lucky. I've got the most amazing woman in the history of the world, so I'm good. But um, in the past, I've, I've realized that if you don't pick the right person to be with, it can actually be very detrimental to yourself and your condition. 
it can actually make it worse. So before you get into a, a hardcore relationship with somebody, make sure that you sit them down and, and you talk about your condition. You make sure that they understand that sometimes you're just going to be feeling crappy. Sometimes you're going to be running around the house doing everything all at once. And, you know, anywhere in between. Just make sure that you educate them so that they know what they're getting into and so that you have a chance to be with someone that actually understands who you are. Okay, let's see. Ah, learn to joke with yourself and others about various symptoms. From forgetfulness to getting lost all the time to being tactless or impulsive, whatever. If you can be relaxed about it all and to have a sense of humor, others will be a little bit more forgiving. Uh, schedule activities with friends. Adhere to these schedules faithfully. It is crucial for you to keep connected to other people. Find and join groups where you are liked, appreciated, understood, and enjoyed. Conversely, don't stay too long where you aren't understood or appreciated. Pay compliments. Notice other people. In general, get social training, as from your coach. And number 50, last one, set social deadlines. <coughs> I don't exactly get the context of that, but I'm not exactly the smartest person in the history world. So uh, basically, these are just tips and tricks to maybe help you without medication to manage your adult ADHD. I know I'm going to put a couple of these into practice. At the very least, one or two might help everybody. Each person might get one or two out of these. But again, I'd like to thank Dr. Hallowell and uh, Dr. John J. Ratty for posting this online. Again, the website is www.drhallowell.com slash um, adult dash ADHD dash 50 dash tips dash of dash management. Um, it's an amazing site. It's a great article. Please go read it. I'll post the uh, link in the description. Uh, if you like this video, uh, please feel free to leave a like, uh, subscribe, share. Sharing is great. We like sharing. Um, uh, that's about it. Thanks again for watching, guys. And I hope that this was educational, and I hope it helps a couple of people at least. Uh, if this helped you, please leave me a comment and let me know. I'd love to know that I'm actually helping people. That would be awesome. Thanks again, guys. I really appreciate you watching. Have a great day.